What's up, my movers and shakers? I'm Dave. This is MS Paints. And today, it's back to basics. So, unlike everyone else, but certainly like a large quantity, I like to go the extra mile when it comes to basing my miniatures. You don't have to, I don't have to, but with minis and models getting ever more complicated and busy, the base is rapidly becoming one of the hottest blank slates in the miniature painting hobby. These volcanic ash bases are going to be perfect for Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000 and stuff, probably they're going to fit into Warcry pretty well too. Kings of War, Conquest, Stargrave, Star Wars, Legion, Infinity and Wild West. As always with bases and terrain, we start with the big things first. Things that affect miniature placement on the base, but also large things in nature and natural placement, normally affect the smaller stuff around them and where they sit. Also, it'd look dog shit if we put the big stuff on last, so, you know, dog shit rule is the most important rule. Throw on a few bigger rocks. Slate will do fine if you have any pieces of slate small enough, but you must promise me that you will paint the slate. I'm using broken up plaster because I'm sat down and the plaster is within easy reach from the last video that I did, so that's why I used that. Slap on a crackle paint of your choice. Not everywhere, since not all of this base is going to be showing uh, the, the nature's port crackling of lava glow, and also covering the whole thing would be a waste of material. And also this stuff does like to flake and fall off if you're not careful, so go sparingly. Once the crackle paint is dry, we're going to take some extremely generic PVA glue and coat all of the areas where we want our dirt and mud to be. And we're going to be texturing this base after these are messages. What's up guys, Tony D here, back in perpetual form of motion. I got, uh, I got the bad man feel with the minute, so I'm, I'm going to put a stop to this form of motion stuff right now. Uh, have you ever watched the website? The Squarespace has got you covered, baby. With a supreme arsenal of ready to go and easily customizable templates available for everybody and web builder like yourself. Squarespace has got you covered, guys. Where's that? You're a crazy go-getter with too much. Where's that? You're always on the move and a crazy go-getter and want to spend even less time shackled to a desktop computer build and a website? Then no problem, because now Squarespace has an app on the telephone so you can build and edit your website on the go or even while you're sat taking it. We've been building our website with a Squarespace and the whole thing took less than an afternoon to pull together. It was that fast and easy, guys. What's that? Not enough for you? Well, if you ever want people to find your hip new Squarespace website, you gotta give that bad boy a name. So head on over to the browser-based acquisition tab to find the name and domain you'd like. Click the any buy click. Click the buy button and it's yours guys. And immediately attach it to your website. All of that and more in one browser-based easy to use. That, that, that's just too crazy. To start your Squarespace journey today, head over to squarespace.com forward slash MSPaints and use the code MSPaints at checkout to save yourself 10% off your first website subscription or domain. All right, bye now. Let's head. Right, let's texture this base up and make it look as terrible as possible in the run up to the painting step. A bag of sharp sand is going to get you closest to where we want to go with this stuff. I've seen that other people like to take those cheap bags and filter it out into the different grit sizes. But to me that looks kind of semi-torturous so I just bought all the stuff in different sizes anyway. The big stones go on first followed by the terrarium grit stuff that I've got. I like this stuff especially because it's absorbent and sticks better than regular rocks. And finish that off with some finer grit sand. This is actually probably just filtered sharp sand that I paid the Wargamer tax on, so there's that.
Okay, to seal this all in place, I personally use alcohol. Methylated spirits also work. This kicks in a capillary action that allows heavy bodied liquids to soak into the materials. What heavy bodied liquids are we talking about? Watered down PVA or some other kind of matte scenic sealant. Given a few hours to dry on the radiator, we have our rock solid bases ready for the painting. First to paint is the lava cracks. Starting off with a heavily watered down yellow and mashing the paint into those cracks to ensure the yellow goes in deep. With some red, I'm repeating the same kind of a step but applying way less and letting it run wherever it wants to run. There are multiple ways of doing this. I'm taking a very dark flat grey and picking out the raised areas of the cracked earth texture. This could also be done much quicker with a dry brush, but since it's my first time doing this, I decided to try both ways. And I preferred both. Pick out a few stones with a lighter grey, normally not my style, but let's give it a go. This step is done with either glazes or washes. Just be careful not to heat the washes in too heavily or you'll lose that glowing illusion. Let's pick some detail out on the main bases using a dry brush and some light grey. And don't forget to include a little of everything in this step since ash basically covers and tints everything in the area that it falls. Now wash color of your choice will bring all the neutral grays into a color area that you think worked best with the minis that are gonna go on top there. Okay, for a nifty cheat effect, adding some light rust weathering powder to these bases is going to add a glowing embery look, but also a dusty iron effect. Probably not the best example of modesty on my part since I use too much, but a neat trick for weathering powder is to dust a little bit on, dry clean your brush, and then spread around what you've got on the base. Weathering powder isn't the easiest thing to get off afterwards, so it's better to start with less and add more later. Complete bell end moment and I forgot to put the tufts on before painting. But these army painter burnt tufts are close enough for me and that's fine. And there we go guys. Really nice and simple volcanic ash waste bases. You might be thinking well that wasn't really that simple but it, you know it was. Uh, aside from the acquisition of some terrain making essentials, the making of these is super simple. Not necessarily easy, since I understand everyone has different ability levels, but they are, in their makeup, simple enough. I'm hoping to do more nuts and bolts basing videos next year, so if you did like this, do let me know in the comments. Big thank you to all my patrons who helped me through this super long year, 
and I will see you all in the new year. Cheers. Am I out of here? <laughs>